today oops, we are doing three body diagrams in two dimensions. This is unit five, forces in two dimensions. So draw a free body diagram of someone's leaning up against a tree. Okay. So we have we're on Earth. Where's the gravity? Okay. The ground is supporting us. Keeping us out of free fall. That's a normal force. Get with that. The tree is also supporting us. Like if the tree didn't exist, what would happen to the guy? Fall backwards. So the, the tree is also exerting a normal force to the right. So we've got two normal forces, so we should probably make a distinction between the two. So I'm going to say normal force from the ground and normal force from the tree. You okay with that? Okay. Now, it didn't say ignore friction. Have you ever done a wall set like this? Kind of put yourself in that, okay? To figure out the direction of friction, here's a, a popular question that I ask myself. It's like, what would happen if I was on a slippery surface? Which way would I slip? So the way I ask it in class is like, hey, if I was standing on ice, if I put this on ice, which way would my feet slip? My feet would slip out from under me to the right. Does that make sense? Okay. So friction always opposes the way an object wants to slip or slide. So it wants to slip this way. So friction opposes that. So friction is acting to the left. All right, with that. Okay. Now, there's probably some friction between your back and the tree. If the tree had ice on it, which way would you slip? Probably down. Does that make sense? Like if you're doing wall sets, you're like, Ugh. so we're going to say friction is going up. So now I have two frictions. So I need to make this and make a distinction between the two. So this is from the ground force of friction from the ground. And this is from, from the tree. How are we doing with that idea? Doing all right there? That was step one. Step two is pick your positive directions. We've got two dimensions now, so I need to pick a positive direction for the X and a positive direction for the Y. I'm just going to say to the right is positive and up is positive Y. And this is my notation for which way is positive. Positive X to the right, positive Y is up. Okay. Step three. So I'm going to ask myself, is the sum of the forces in the x direction equal to zero? And is the sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero? Okay. The reason that I'm doing that is because forces in the horizontal direction are independent of forces in the vertical direction. Just like in projectile motion, 
the forces of the motion in the x direction or in the horizontal direction are independent of the forces of the motion in the vertical direction. It's the same idea. This is our chart. This is our horizontal and our vertical chart. You see in the similarities here. Okay, well, so you're going to ask yourself, is the sum of the forces in the x direction, are those equal to zero? And separately, is the sum of the forces in the y direction, are those equal to zero? Tell your neighbor and tell them y for each the x and then also in the Y. Okay, some of the forces in the x direction are they equal to zero? Why? Yes, why? It's at rest. Okay, we're looking at the motion. We're not looking at the forces, we're looking at the motion. And same thing could be said about the y direction as well, correct? Equal to zero because it's at rest. So we're good with, yes, they're equal to zero. Okay, so now step four is we're adding up the forces just in the x direction. Find the sum of the forces just in the x direction. Taking into account what's positive and negative. Okay, so in this case, I said to the right is positive. What force are acting just in the horizontal direction in the x direction? If normal force is in the positive direction, friction is in the negative direction. It's acting to the left. So I have normal force from the tree minus force of friction from the ground is equal to zero. That's my setup in the x direction. I want you to do the y direction. Friction from the tree is going up, that's positive. Normal force from the ground is going up, that's also in the positive direction. And gravity is going in the negative direction. Adding those up will all equal zero. How did we do? It does not matter which came first here. What matters is the sign that you put in front of them. That's what matters. Good? Seeing some similarities, what we've done in the past, and projectile motion. Ready to move on? I feel like I need a heart monitor and you guys like beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, I lost two. Oh, there goes three. Around, around. Oh, man. Okay.
draw a free body diagram of the box. Go. Force of gravity, we're on Earth. Normal force is from the floor. They didn't say ignore friction, so friction is going the opposite direction. It's being, uh, it's sliding. And then tension at some angle. How do you do? Okay. Step one. Step two, pick the way you want to be uh, the positive direction. I'm going to say to the left is positive because it's moving that way. And up. It's just kind of default. Okay, let me just throw this out here. Disclaimer, warning, with projectile motion, up is always the positive direction. With projectile motion, up is positive direction always, regardless of which way it's moving, down, up or down. But this is not projectile motion. Okay. So, step three. Is the sum of the forces in the x direction equal to zero? And some of the forces in the y direction, is that equal to zero? Tell your neighbor about the sum of the forces what you know about the sum of the forces in the x direction and tell them why you know that. Okay, some of the forces in the X direction, are they equal to zero? Yes, why? You're moving at a constant velocity in the X direction. Okay? What about the y direction? How is it moving in the y direction? It's not moving in the y direction. It's at rest in the y direction. You see how we're, make, we're still making a distinction between how is it moving horizontally and how is it moving vertically. They're independent of each other still. Okay. So, yes, they're equal to zero for both of them. Now, when we start adding up all the forces just acting in the x direction, 
and adding up all the forces just in the y direction, what is it that's throwing a wrench in our system? That tension thing. It's like going at an angle at 40 degrees. What? Like, dude, that, like, which side of the chart should we put this tension in? In the X or in the Y? Neither, right? It's like, it's Y. It's like going at an angle. It's like, ah. So what, what should we do? I'm at a loss. Tell your neighbor what do you think we should possibly do. Why not do a little bit of trigonometry and do some like components and stuff? Because, like, we know how to do that. So, we draw our triangle. For the forces here, so this at an angle is going this much, is pulling this much in the x direction, is pulling this much in the y direction. Okay, and at this point in time, this is as far as I want you to break it down. Just put a sub y and a sub x. Okay. So, I made to the right positive, so I'm going to say F T sub X, the X component of tension, minus friction is equal to zero. I want you to do the Y direction. That's on you. Total forces in the y direction. So the purple is going up. Normal force is also going up. And gravity is going down. How do we do? Making sense? Maybe sort of, kind of. Okay, that's as far as I want you to go. For the worksheet that I'm going to give you, that you'll have time to like you could do it for homework or work on it tomorrow. Or at some point, it's due on Wednesday. That's as far as I want you to go. Okay. All right. For this one, I just want you to draw the free body diagram, not of the rock, not of the rock, but of you pulling the rock. What forces are acting on you?
Okay. So let's do a little bit of a conversation here. I'm assuming everybody's good with gravity going straight down and normal force going straight up. Okay. Now, as I pull on this, if I was if I was on ice, which way would my my feet slip? My feet would slip whoop that way. So which way is friction acting? Friction is acting to the left. Good with that. Now, if this rope didn't exist, what would happen to me? I'd fall down. So which way is the rope exerting a force on me? I do not care what force that I'm putting on the rope. That is not what I'm asking for. That a free body diagram looks at what forces are acting on the object. What is the world doing to the object? Not what the object is doing to the world. The object is the victim. What is the poor, what is the harsh world doing to this poor victim? Okay, it's not a good way to look at life. It's a good way to look at physics. Okay. Your free body diagram should look like this. Gravity, normal force, friction, tension. That's it. Okay. I do not care about what forces the person is doing. All I care about is what the world is doing to the person. The rope is pulling them down and to the right. That makes sense? Okay. All right. Anytime you have a, an object on a hill, on a ramp, a slide, an incline of any sense, sort, my recommendation is this. And draw the box on that incline. Is the force of gravity going A or B? Is the force of gravity going A, acting in the A direction or the B direction? B, always straight down towards the center of the Earth. Okay. Is normal force acting in direction A or in direction B? Is normal force acting in direction A or in direction B? The normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. Always acts perpendicular to the surface. Correct answer is B. Actually, here's some here's a suggestion. Make the, I should have said this before. Make the force of gravity pretty long.
Okay. And if we park this on a on a sheet of ice, which way would the car go? Down so friction opposes that. Goes up the hill. That's your free body diagram. You okay with that? Okay. All right. Do not draw what I'm about to draw. So here's your y axis, here's your x axis. Don't draw these. How many vectors are at an angle? How many vectors don't lie on the axis? How many vectors am I going to have to break up into components? Two. Ugh. That sounds laborious. But wait. We're in physics class and not math class. We can do some crazy stuff that math people don't necessarily appreciate, but they can't say you can't do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a hold of the x-axis. I'm going to tilt it so that... The y, sorry, the x-axis is now parallel to the ramp, to the hill, to the incline. And the y-axis is now perpendicular to the ramp. I'm going to make, in this scenario, I'm going to make down the ramp my positive x And that way, my positive y. What was the benefit of that? How many vectors are now not on the axes? One. Life got better. And actually, in some scenarios, you can't solve it unless you tilt the axis. So anytime you're on an incline, a ramp of any sort, tilt the axis so the x-axis is parallel to the ramp. You okay with that? Now, some people get wigged out by that. They're like, dude, that is so trippy. If that, if that just bleh, can't process that, draw it like this and then take your paper and physically rotate it so that you can see so you can see it like you normally see it does that make sense like draw it like this and then physically take your paper and make it so it looks like that I would not recommend drawing your free body diagrams like this. Not going to count you off. It's just kind of weird for gravity to go. Okay. Um, now, there's very few things in this class that I'm going to tell you straight up memorize, but this next thing is one of them. Whatever this angle is, the angle of the incline. That is the angle between the new y-axis, the tilted y-axis, and the force of gravity. Okay, Whatever angle this is, that's the same angle between this new y-axis, tilted y-axis, and the force of gravity. Okay, Geometrically, I could prove it to you, but most people don't care, so I'm just telling you to memorize it. If you, if you want to know why, I can, I can run you through a quick proof, um, but on your own time. Okay. It is not it is not this angle. 
It is not that angle. It's this angle. Okay. Whatever angle this is, that's the same angle between the uh, y-axis and the force of gravity. Okay. So, to evaluate this, I need to break the force of gravity up into components. So here's F, G, Y. And here's F, G, X. How are we doing with that? Give me confidence rating so far where we're at here. Five, owning this one, like. Flash me a quick little digits here. Where are we at? Don't have to broadcast it, just just seeing where we're at. Okay. All right. Some of the forces in the X direction, some of the force in the Y direction. Both are equal to zero because the car is parked. It's at rest. I'm not feel like you could discern that yourself. Okay. In the x direction, so I'm adding up the forces in the x direction. I made down the ramp positive. So when I deal with forces, I'm not going to say rare. I'm going to try to transition to say instead of saying horizontal direction and vertical direction, I'm going to say in the X direction and in the Y direction because in this scenario, X isn't horizontal and Y is not vertical. It's been tilted. Okay. With projectile motion, we're still good with horizontal and vertical. So in the X direction... That's going down the ramp is positive x. FGX is going in the positive direction. And friction is going in the negative y. Sorry, negative x direction. That's equal to zero. Okay. I want you to set up and do the math for the y direction. Normal force minus force of gravity in the y direction is equal to zero. How do we do? Good with that. And that's as far as I want you to go on the worksheet that I'm going to give you. You're just setting things up. Okay. 
questions here. Points of confusion. What do you do with, what's the purple thing? What's with the red slanted thing? It doesn't have to be a, a well-composed question. Be like, huh? I don't get that. Okay, give this one a shot. Okay, how do we do on the free body diagram? Okay. Tell your neighbor is the sum of the forces and the x direction equal to zero and tell them why or why not. Is the sum of the force in the x direction equal to zero? No, why not? You're speeding up in the x direction. Okay? We're just looking at this, okay? 
is the sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero? Tell your neighbor why or why not. Correct answer is? Yes. The y direction is no longer this way. It is now this way. How is the skier moving this way? Is the skier coming off the mountain? Is it going into the mountain? In this direction, it's at rest. You see how we're, we're dissecting, like, how is it moving just in the x direction? How is it moving just in the y direction? It's the same mentality we do we had with projectile motion. So it's equal to zero in the y direction. Okay. So you have F, G, X minus friction is equal to because it's not equal to zero, equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. Does that make sense? And in the y direction, we have normal force minus FGY. So that's, that's what I want you to do for the worksheet that we'll check on Wednesday. Okay. So that's the lesson today.